Good evening, everyone. My name is Brian, and this is Copycat Trading. And today is Wednesday, January 10th, 2024. And here is your daily update video on the markets. And uh, I just wanted to point out that the spiders have moved higher today. Looks like we came really close to a kind of a short term double top before we hit up, pop up to the $480, which is going to be our long term double top and all time highs right there. And uh, that is going to be a test of the market, <clears throat> whether it's going to go up and make new all-time highs or if it's going to turn back around and make some lows i think the consensus is that it's going to make all-time highs and break out which makes me a little bit nervous so the bulls are definitely uh, up and buying today um, our volume today was 67.39 million which is our 039 million which is not very much um, our volume is uh, relatively light right now so there's not a lot of conviction in the market and when that happens the market does float higher uh, we we're up by 0.57 percent on the spy on the s p 500 which is not saying much but it did eke out again um, and reverse this uh, down candle move from yesterday all right as far as the queues go the queues were up 0.68 percent <clears throat> and uh, a good showing today and uh, they've got their all-time highs in sight as well which the all-time highs are sitting right here um, at uh, 412.92, so almost 413, and uh, they had fairly good, or they had fairly low volume, just the same as the spiders today. They just had a gentle float. As far as the intraday, this is what it looked like. You can see that whenever we opened the day, we kind of gapped higher just a little bit, came back down here to the gap, and then we just floated up higher for the rest of the day with low volume. Just had a couple of uh, spikes in volume, but not very much at all. And then at the end, just like normal, we had a pretty good spike of somebody pushing that thing up. So that's what the intraday looked like on the NASDAQ. That's the um, technology stocks. As far as the uh, Russell goes, the Russell had a fairly flat day. It has the it's the most underperformer, and it is still forming a beautiful bear flag right here. And we'll see what happens. But it may need some more backing and filling before either it can go higher or come back down lower. And so it is actually below this pivot top right here, which is not good for the uh, IWM for the Russell. So we may see some um, further downside on the Russell. If it does come down, I would expect it to come down to either this level or this pivot point right here. Let me just draw that in. This pivot point right here or the um, 50 uh, the uh, 50 ma which is right there and so i'd expect it to come down maybe to these pivots or this pivot before it started following again whatever the spiders and cues did so we'll just have to watch and see what happens on that as far as gold actually let's get some targets on spiders on the spiders of course the short-term target is the top right here and then over the long term it's going to be this double top i'll just go ahead and put something in there so that we can keep track of it so that's going to be the short-term target and then that's going to be a pretty big test. If we get above that and we retrace back to it, that might be a buying opportunity for just a short term. <clears throat> I would not trust it too much. As you can see, according to the RSI, we are still significantly oversold on the, or we're almost in the oversold territory. We're oversold here before we had the pullback, but we're pretty oversold in the daily um, uh, period. But in the weekly, on the weekly side, we are significantly oversold. So we're still due for some backing and filling. So I would venture to say we might come up here and touch that line and then may have another pullback and we'll just have to wait and see and we'll see whether that is a more long-term thing or a short-term thing. Q is about the same thing. Its short-term uh, target is this high, which is its all-time highs, and it may continue going up until the spiders decide to do something. The NASDAQ is kind of tied to the spiders in certain regards, except for the Magnificent 7, which the Magnificent 7 have been teaching us that they are holding up the entire market and that would be involving these down here which we'll get to in a minute as far as gold goes gold hadn't done much it's still relatively flat just barely eked out a loss today of 0.3 percent not very much not very much movement and uh, all the stuff that i showed you yesterday in yesterday's video as far as the inverse head and shoulders is still intact um silver <clears throat> silver actually came down a little bit lower past that neckline today <clears throat> keep in mind that I did say on silver that uh, if we do come back and close above this neckline, we could be um, going to make a bigger move for this inverse head and shoulders, which is could uh, send us up considerably higher on silver. If we do break down and we come down here to around the $20 or even the 1958 level, I will be accumulating silver right there because I think that would probably be a pretty big buying opportunity. So uh, silver is continuing on. We have officially broken this uh, head and shoulders pattern and our target is way down here, which I showed you yesterday in yesterday's video. 
natural gas natural gas had a very interesting day and i told you yesterday in the in the in the uh, update video that we could probably come up and we would probably stall at this level of course i thought it was going to stall at this level too and it went right through it but it went to this level and then actually pulled back today um and over yesterday it pulled back again but it uh, pulled back yesterday came right to our other support line i am going to wait for it to come back into here and kind of have a little bit more of a retrace before i trust it because it's not healthy for a stock or a commodity to go um such vertical make such a vertical move uh without having some pullback and backing and filling so i'll wait till it comes back into this area maybe this upsloping trend line maybe down in here i may add a little bit here and then add a little bit more if it comes back here before I jump on board and look for a higher move. Ultimately speaking, like I told you yesterday in yesterday's video, I expect this to move quite a bit higher. I think we're at a significant bottom and maybe even a multi-year bottom, but that's just my personal opinion. And that is where we're looking like on the natural gas chart. As far as US oil goes, oil, not much has changed since yesterday's analysis. We're still forming this gigantic bear flag and you can see it a little bit better on the weekly, but the weekly is forming this great big down thrust and now a uh, 45 or uh, less than a 45 degree um, bear flag and this could indicate that we're going to go much lower and um, so far that's what it's looking like look like it was going to kind of break out there but it didn't wind up doing that so it looks like it may be breaking down we'll just have to wait and see what happens until it gets below this uh, this uh, uh, upsloping trend line um, there's not a lot to worry about as far as breaking down but if it does drop below that down uh, down sloping trend line and then gets below this one then we can see significant downside probably all the way down to 64 dollars a barrel or somewhere around there Bitcoin. Bitcoin, what an interesting story of Bitcoin. As of right now, I got word on the uh, Bitcoin approval or that the Bitcoin approval was going to happen after today's market close. If it did take place, I have got, not gotten the news yet, but if it did take place, then nothing really has happened except for a sell the news event. So I am not sure whether Bitcoin's ETF was approved yet or not. Um, let me just look here, see if I see any of the news. And I don't see anything on any news. Um, uh, actually, Gary Gensler, chair of the SEC, while we approved the listing and trading of certain spot Bitcoin ETPs shares today, we did not approve or endorse Bitcoin. Okay, so they are approved, which is kind of strange because Bitcoin is not really moving um, hardly at all, which is pretty amazing. And uh, so last night in the after hours, we actually got word, and let me see if I can bring up a 10 minute, maybe you can see this a little bit better. But last night in the afternoon hours, we got a false tweet that said that Bitcoin ETFs were approved and you can see the price spiked up and then it came right back in and sold way down. Um, and of course they claimed, the uh, SEC claimed that their Twitter account had been hacked. Now, what the truth is, I do not know. But uh, they claimed that their, their Twitter account or their X account, I guess it is as it is, had been hacked and that somebody put that out unauthorized, uh, but it sure was strange. It had good lawyer lingo in it about how that it had been approved, and then the, the price just collapsed because they put a, another one, another tweet immediately out saying this was not approved and we've been hacked, and et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, it came back in, uh, it's hit this support, and now, as you can see, nothing is happening. There's not any volume. See the volume candles over here whenever that happened yesterday. Um, that was pretty big volume, but after the ETFs have officially been approved, um, nothing is happening. Maybe they're waiting to see whether or not the uh, SEC is actually hacked. <laughs> um, anyway, that's uh, what happened in Bitcoin today. And it is just sitting there and just hanging out. It's really, really not doing anything. It's, it's almost like a non-event so far. So maybe it'll get bigger a little bit later on. I don't know. As far as the semiconductors go, semiconductors look pretty much like the um, spiders and the QQQs. We got a small gain today and we are up 0.9% on the day and post it's trading down just a hair. And then as far as Apple goes, Apple carved out a nice game, uh, came up and actually I am in Apple since the 200 moving average, which is here. Um, and so I've got a pretty good win on my hands on the Apple chart, but we'll see what happens over the uh, next few days. It still has to recapture the 50 and the 20 to be a healthy chart. Right now it is still in an unhealthy position and just looking for a bounce. So I'll be unloading probably half of my position, probably right in here at the top of this candle here. And then I will put a stop at break even and um, and uh, let it try to run some more. And if it can, you never can tell with with uh, Apple. We'll see what that next pivot is, whether that next high is a higher high, which I assume it will be a lower high. And at that point, then we have a chart that may be on its way down. And this just might be the cracks that we've been looking for uh, to see. As of right now, you can see that we've got a higher highs in here. 
So this is our high way back here in July, and uh, here is another high in December. And so right now uh, we got higher highs, and uh, we did not have, and we got uh, lower lows, or excuse me, higher lows. So we've still got uh, a good um, form, good pattern out of this. However, it is now below its 50 on the daily and it's low on the 20. If we are, or excuse me, uh, below the 20. However, if we look at the weekly chart, we are still in an uptrend with higher highs and higher lows. So we are still looking good on the chart for Apple um, as long as it continues on this path of recovery. And we'll see if it will. That's a pretty amazing um, what it has done over the last few um, days. And I'm just doing this while I'm talking to you guys. I haven't done this at all. But uh, it's pretty amazing what it has done over the last few um, uh, work days or over, over the last few days of trading and how that it has recovered real well. And we'll just see what happens over the coming days of whether or not it's actually going to do anything um, as far as the recovery goes. And if not, then we'll be looking for this to be your support level as it comes back down. And uh, if it um, breaks that level, then we're in for a lot further down. But uh, otherwise, if it goes up, then look for this to be your resistance level. And of course, a lot of stops along the way being this gap fill and then also several of the uh, peaks and um, uh, resistance levels as we go up as well. As far as Tesla goes, here is your update on Tesla. Tesla was down slightly today, 0.43%, which is not saying very good things for Tesla because Tesla um, was down in an up market and it's been up the last couple of days, but Tesla has underperformed considerably uh, in this time. <clears throat> and there's probably some fundamental news that is involved in this, but we can still take a look. If you take a look at this and the, um, the way this looks, as far as your downsloping trend lines go, you got a downsloping trend line right there that it has just kind of peaked off of and then it kind of broke below and it has um, not quite confirmed below that level, but we could get some lower uh, lows on that. Or it had, you can take a look at um, this line here and we're right in the middle of some support. And so you can see that that particular trend line comes in here with those uh, uh, tops right there. It pierced it right here. And then it's coming down here. So this is a test for Tesla, whether or not it's going to uh, make any kind of a breakout or make any kind of an upturn from here. And we'll see whether or not Elon Musk's news events are, are uh, doesn't don't bother him. I'm just curious real quick of what kind of Fibonacci retrace we've got. We're almost to the 50% Fibonacci retrace um, right down here. And I actually got an alarm for that. And then your 618 is down here by this big gap fill. Um, so we'll see what happens, but uh, probably I would venture to say the 220 is probably where I would look to pick up some um, Tesla if I'm gonna, if I'm going to take it on the swing side. So anyway, that's what it looks uh, like in Tesla. Nvidia again is a powerhouse, and uh, just according to our uh, parallel channel here, we have made some pretty significant climbs here, and it uh, looks like we may be trying to break above this parallel channel. And um, I've always said that. The highs of parallel channels are a lot more difficult to predict than what the lows of the parallel channel are. So if I bring this parallel channel down to where these three um, lows are touching here, I would try to make it more precise by bringing those um, into that level. And um, that would be the low that I would start purchasing. So if it for some reason came back down and hit down here, that's where I'd start purchasing. However, the highs um, are a lot more difficult. As you can see, there's a high here, and if you drew a parallel channel off of that, it would peak through here, and if you drew a parallel channel off of that, it would peak through here, and if you drew a parallel channel off of that, it would make it up here. And and parallel channels on the highs are a lot more difficult. It's like somebody throwing up a rock, and the more effort that they push into that, you might peak up above it slightly and then come back down. So at some point along these, the the line did come back down. The, the, you saw the, if I was to draw the parallel channel among these highs, you saw the the rock, if you will, um, kind of come up and go above the line and then come back down and then go above it and then come back down. But it, it's it's always there. You never can tell where it's going to come back down at, but it is close and it is providing resistance. So this upper portion of this parallel line, uh, parallel channel is providing resistance and we'll just have to see when the throw of this particular one uh, runs out of steam and comes back down. Now, does that mean it's going to come back inside the channel? Not necessarily. It could come back, retrace the channel, and then springboard up even further. There was quite a bit of consolidation here um, that occurred. And so this consolidation may have uh, caused us to have a leap uh, as far as this goes. So this may be one level to look at. We may have a level that is going to mirror this level. So if we 
um, if we take that charts are going to repeat themselves, then from the bottom to the top here, we could be looking at a run all the way up to 586. So it could be quiet moving, making quite a move up based upon what its mirror of the chart might be. All right, as far as Microsoft goes, and this will be the last one we go over, here's Microsoft and Microsoft. I was talking about yesterday how this was making a bull flag and it was poised to break out of this, and it looks like it may have broken out today. However, if it, it the next stop it had, and of course it came right up to and kissed the uh, double top um, today, but it has not moved above that, but it looks like it's going to break out. So I'm going to take this, take our line and just move it over here. And it is one great big bear flag or excuse me, bull flag. And, uh, it could very well break out this week and head up to all time highs. We'll just see what happens with Microsoft chart. All right. That is it for today. And that is your daily update, daily brief for the markets today. Today is January 10th. And this is the copycat trader signing off. Have a great day, everybody.